Network, Superior, Wisconsin. Hello, and welcome to Paraversal Universe, where all paranormal perspectives apply. Join paranormal historian and ufologist Kevin Mellick and psychic medium and demonologist Jennifer Selsey as they navigate us through the different categories of the unknown and the unexplained, including ghosts and haunted places, cryptozoology, aliens and UFOs, theology, metaphysics, and conspiracy theories, with the top analysts and experts of these disciplines. If it's amazing, if it's unusual, or mysterious, if it's bizarre, or creepy, and fantastic, if it's unbelievable, paranormal, or supernatural, then it's Paraversal Universe Radio. Now here are your hosts, Kevin and Jennifer, with Paraversal Universe Radio. Brought to you by the Northern Wisconsin Paranormal Society, Limited, and the Northwoods Paranormal Resource Center here in Rylander, Wisconsin. We're your hosts, Kevin and Jennifer Mallet. Hello, everyone. And hello to everybody in the IRN chat room. We look forward to your questions and comments as always. IRNchat.com is the link for the chat room. So come join us there. Tonight we have a real awesome show for y'all this evening. The category for tonight is uh, cryptids. The topic for the evening is the Chicago flying phantom or as otherwise known the Chicago Owl Man, Mothman, Mandat, Bat Squatch, on and on. Anyhow, uh, tonight's guest is Fertian researcher and author Lon Strickler from Phantom and Monsters and Arcane Radio. He's been following this report uh, extensively and we will bring him on in a minute or two after we do this week's shout outs. Shoutouts go to all those who share our banners on social media. Uh, we appreciate it very much. And uh, who do we got? We have first up. We have Josh Chairs, oh. Bizarro World, Cindy Lou, Christy Johns, Jamie Demolos, JJ uh, JJ Paranormal, Paranormal Soup, Jason Bland. Debbie Grassberger Schmoll, Brins Paranormal, Walter Brooks, Chrissy McManus, Oshkosh Paranormal, Twin Ports Paranormal, Johnny Michael, Melissa Reiner, Greta Earthley, Chris Morris, Tiffany Cantlow, Howie O'Dell of The Rift, and of course, Mom. Wow. And thank, thank you for all the shares, and also a big shout out to everybody who is joining us tonight in chat as well. Yep. Hello, everyone. We have uh, many regulars. Hello. We're always glad to see you here. So, all right. What do you see? We bring a guest on. Yes. Ron, are you with us this evening? Yeah, I'm here. How you doing? Good. How are you? Thank you so much for coming on the show. No problem. Welcome to the IRN, Paranormal Universe. Uh, before we jump into the whole Chicago Flying Phantom mystery, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself uh, for the guests who may not know who you are? Well, I'm the uh, writer and publisher of the blog Phantoms and Monsters which I've been writing since 2005. 
I also send out our daily newsletter, which is free. I've got about 30,000 subscribers currently. Uh, I write about anything, and it has to do with the paranormal, cryptozoology, UFOs, uh, hauntings, etc., aliens. Uh, I also have written five books, working on a sixth one. And uh, I just kind of go with the flow with everything I do, and anything new comes up, I try to report it and try to report it as truthful as possible. Your site, Phantom and Monsters, is well received and quite popular. Uh, and uh, we've been fans of that for a while now. Oh, yeah. Uh, did you, uh, you know, when you first got the first couple of Chicago sightings, did you ever think that it would turn into this? No, no. This, um, this group of sightings is most likely, and from what I've looked into, it's probably the largest group of sightings since the uh, Mothman at Point Pleasant back in the late 60s. This is, uh, this is a fairly remarkable group of sightings of a, of a being uh, or several beings. I, I personally believe it's more than one, possibly three at this point. Uh, I don't know. But it, it, it's actually showing up in all parts of the city. Different people, different economical social types are seeing this thing and uh but overall the, the sites have generally been the same type of thing but there have been some variations there were two reports in 2011 do you think these are related and uh if so why the six-year delay in more sightings I don't know. There have been, actually, there, there are three reported sightings from 2011. Uh, the fall of 2011, over a three-month period, there were three sightings. Uh, the first one was concentrated around the uh, University of Chicago. Then the other two were a, bit, a little bit further south. I, I don't know if it's related or not. It, it's possible there was, there was a photograph taken of this so-called flying humanoid. I, I don't know if that's what it was, but people did see this thing, the ground standing, and uh, those descriptions are fairly similar to what we're getting now. Hmm. Yeah, they sounded so. Uh, and now this year, uh, there have been almost 20 sightings in the Chicagoland area, and uh, this is actually historically... Uh, different than your average cryptid sighting, like you said. Uh, historically, to have this many sightings in one area for for any cryptid is notable. The fact that this is happening in a metropolis, any thoughts on that? No, not really. I, uh, it, it's just a matter of trying to figure out why it's appearing the way it is. How it's appearing, uh, the mechanism for showing up. I, I don't believe that this this being is twenty four seven. I I do believe it's coming in through some type of portal, some type of uh, I don't know. It being an actually an extra dimensional being. Uh, you know, it just seems to show up at certain times. Now, I mean, and it's kind of similar to what people experienced back in, in Point Pleasant. Uh, what was unusual about Point Pleasant was that uh, a lot of the sightings were at the TNT area outside of town. Though there were other sightings, sporadic sightings, but not as close, so close of an encounter than those that experienced at the TNT facility. Uh, these sightings in Chicago, for the most part, <clears throat> have been fleeting sightings. I mean, they haven't been sightings that have involved any personal contact, but the witnesses have fairly well seen the same thing, and there have been a few on-ground sightings, but for the most part, it's been in the air. Um why it's happening, I have no idea. Uh, you know, I've got, I've received all kinds of uh, theories about this. 
being a harbinger of or something bad that's going to happen or something similar. I don't know if that's what's really going on. But it's it's there for a reason. And uh, the fact that we have now gotten a police officer report seeing this thing uh, tends to make me believe that, uh, you know, that people are just not imagining things, that they really are seeing it. And I'll tell you, the witnesses that we have had have not embellished what they've seen. Um, I myself and Emmanuel Navarrete or UFO Clearinghouse have uh, taken the bulk of the sightings. And uh, these witnesses we have talked to have been very forthright and have... um, have not embellished on what they've seen. They, you know, they stick to what they originally tell us, and, and that's fairly unusual. That just does, that doesn't happen a lot, and uh, you know, I, that's what makes me believe there's some real credibility to this. Well, you just mentioned that uh, a police officer uh, reported this, and. We were talking before the show, and you said this is recent development stuff. Would you like to share uh, the, uh, account? the account? Well, uh, yeah. Ma- Manuel Navarrete over UFO Clearinghouse contacted me last night, and he said he received the report, so he wrote it up and sent it off to me. And I- I'm going to go ahead, and I'll just go ahead and read it. Uh, and it, it Actually, it's a, a very amazing report. It's one of the best we've had. He said, I'm going to tell you about something that happened to me on the night of June 29th, 2017 in Chicago, Illinois. I'm reporting this of my own volition, and I'm wanting to stay anonymous due to the fact that I work for the Chicago Police Department and do not want anyone else to know that I submitted this report. I have been with the Chicago Police Department for over eight and a half years. The only people who know that I submitted this are my wife, my son, who encouraged me to submit this, and my partner, who is also was a witness to the incident. I want you to know that I am of a sound mind and health and don't want any publicity other than just reporting this incident. I also want you to know I am not prone to fits of fantasy or hoaxing anything that, that I've seen, especially while I'm on duty. Now, on the night of June 29, 2017, at approximately 11.15 p.m., my partner and I were on routine patrol <clears throat> and approaching the intersection of West 81st and South Throop Street in, in the Auburn-Gresham neighborhood of Chicago, Illinois. We were flagged down by a group of people who were pointing up to the top of an apartment building that was on the corner. We pulled over and they immediately started yelling telling us to look up at the building. Many of the people were very frightened and were very excited about seeing what they had seen. My partner and I looked and see a large creature that was approximately six to six and a half feet tall and was very thin. If it had been a human, it would have been, uh, it would have been thought to be emaciated. This thing was standing on top of the building and had what looked like a pair of very large wings that extended out at least 8 to 10 feet from tip to tip. No discernible features. It just looked like a dark black shadow with wings. My partner and I both thought it was somebody trying to jump from the building and maybe wearing a costume of some kind. When we both shined our flashlights to try to get a better look at what we were dealing with, this thing took off into the air and flew away. As this creature flew away, headed in a southerly direction, something sounding like a scream came from it, and with a matter of five seconds, this creature was gone into the night. The people who initially flagged us down had said that many people in the neighborhood had seen this thing for the previous two nights. And this just happened to be the only time that it had been seen in a stationary place. We stood there stunned as this thing flew away and disappeared into the night. We stood there and talked to the group of people who flagged us down, taking information down. 
Okay, Kevin, for the grand prize of one million dollars, what color is the White House? Um, I know this. I know this. I know this. Um, five seconds. Oh, switching to Geico could save you a bunch of money on car insurance. Okay, judges. That's true, Kevin. Bill and Owen, congratulations. You're a winner. Woo! Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. And any information regarding previous sightings from the nights before? We initially were doubtful about following a report because we thought that we'd be made fun of for seeing little green men. We finally filed a report as we did not want to violate protocol. Nothing was ever said about the report being filed, and as of right now, it's been business as usual. We wanted to file this report <clears throat> because after I told my son the story, he went online and showed me that this is not the only setting of something similar being seen in the city. I showed my partner the day after the sighting, and he said he didn't want any want to be involved. And as far as he was concerned, it was nothing more than a large owl or a big bird that was misidentified. My son was the one who encouraged me to file this and do it anonymously to protect my identity. I know what I saw was real, and even though I have no explanation as to what it truly is, I know that it, what I saw was flesh and blood. I am a Christian man who believes that there are things that come from other planes and stalk the people of this earth, and that only one's faith is what protects us from these things. I know that my faith is strong, and therefore I am protected, and I hope that I never see this thing again. Thank you very much for your time, and have a blessed day. Now, this is, uh, this is an amazing account, but the best part is that you know, now we have a, supposedly have a police report in the system. Um, now, I took some Im- If you go on the on the blog, I after I posted the I uh, had some images of the intersection during the day, but in the direction of where this thing flew off. The buildings you can see are no more than two or three stories high. So uh, they got a pretty good look at it, and. Uh, some remarkable aspects to this report are, of course, that these were police officers who uh, were flagged down by residents who were concerned, and uh, that the description was fairly similar to what the other ones we had. And you know, they were confounded. I mean, they they had no idea what it was. So. Uh, Hopefully, you know, th- this is going to be the last time we have either a police officer or somebody who works for the city contact us. Uh, you know, the, the fact that these are people with, with credibility and her used to seeing strange things, even though they probably wouldn't admit to it all the time, uh, is, a, is a major factor in this case. And, uh, you know, it, it, it like I said before, it adds good credibility to to what's going on. Well, we got a whole bunch of questions coming on, <clears throat> so uh, All right. let's throw a couple of them your way. All right, give me one second. There we go. Okay, so we have four questions for you from the chat room. The first question for the guests. How much are these modern sightings related to the medieval legends of gargoyles, etc.? Well, there have been some descriptions of this, uh, of this being where people said they, it kind of reminded them of gargoyles. Uh, I have been involved with sightings of gargoyle-like beings over the years, especially in Pennsylvania. If there's a is there a relation to it? I don't know. If you think a gargoyle is uh, an extra dimensional being and, and not of this earth, I think you're probably in the right neighborhood. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, so the next question we have for you is: There any way to stop it from? Is there any way to stop it from starting and, and stop. stopping? 
I, I don't understand what you mean. Is there any way to stop to prevent these sightings from occurring? Oh, well, if it is, I haven't been able to figure that out yet. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. No, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's been... Well, the thir- the J- June 30th has been, actually been the last sighting uh, that's been reported. But, you know, I, just because the fact that, you know, Chicago has got 3 million residents, and a lot of times... This thing is being seen by many people at one time. Uh, We know there are many more people seeing it. It's just the fact that they haven't been reporting it or don't know how to report it. So, um, you know, it's been, like I said, it's been two weeks since the last sighting. But we've had that, we've had uh, periods of time where it wasn't seen before as well. So, you know, it may pick up again. Who knows? I mean, it. Is this a harbinger or something? I, I have no idea. So the next question, does the number of sightings in Chicago have anything to do with the crime and murder rate in Chicago? People have suggested it may. Um, I know the murder rate in Chicago in 2016 had almost doubled as compared to the two previous years. Uh but this would be, you know, this happened before the sightings began. Now, does it have something to do with the current crime in, in Chicago? I, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't have any way of knowing that. And the fourth question from chat is, have you come across any reports of associated high strangeness with these Owlman sightings, such as in the events preceding the collapse of the Silver Bridge in Point Pleasant? Well, Point Pleasant is probably the most well-known disaster that people associate with the Mothman. But uh, there have been others in the past. Uh, People swore that the bridge that collapsed in Minneapolis several years ago, that they some people had seen a similar type being uh, in the area. Though we'd never received any reports prior to the bridge collapsing. Uh, the same happened in Chernobyl and as well as Fukushima during the uh, tsunami. People, you know, afterwards mentioned that they had seen something. Now, I don't know how true that is. Uh, there have, other, have been other instances in the past, uh, small instances, personal incidents where people have seen these things who have reported to me. Uh, in particular, I know of one woman who was actually near Point Pleasant several years ago. She was on a business trip, and she had seen, she was in her hotel room, had seen something similar to this out in the parking lot of the hotel, and thought it had gotten into the, the building because she heard some strange things out in the hallway that evening. And she later suffered several medical issues and such. And in fact, you know, with this sighting in particular, uh, back on the 22nd of March, we in one of our one of our reports, a gentleman by the name of Billy Bantz, he uh, was a truck driver, and he saw something similar to this in the area of Cicero, which is just west of Chicago, but it's still in the Chicago limits. And uh, he has suffered several medical issues, particularly involving his eyes and eyesight and brain since those sightings. Coming into this week, I was half thinking, well, you know, there's always a possibility it could be like a drone or a flying suit, you know, some, some, uh, you know, uh, underground company is testing or, or something, but uh, with with the last report you you read, uh, one thing I noticed is that it was, this time it wasn't just flying, but that it was actually like perched, or not perched, but but on something. Yeah. I, and the other thing, too, is that uh, we noticed that there was uh, one report that claimed that two of these creatures were spotted flying around each other in circles. 
Uh, which brings us to the question, that one report alone, besides that one report, are all the other reports singular? And would one report be enough to uh, constitute a breeding population um, opposed to, I don't know, uh, opposed to not, I guess. Well, I, you know, there has only been the one multiple sighting. Uh, but that same day, there was another sighting as well nearby. This was um, just outside of downtown in the lake area. And the other sighting was actually along the river in downtown. Uh, now, that other sighting only had one. There was only one of these beings. As far as a breeding population, I you know, I don't think there's... I don't. I don't think that these these flying humanoids are of this world. They may actually be flesh and blood. I believe they are flesh and blood, but I do. I don't think that they are residing in the area. I think they're coming in and out somehow. Um, there has been one part of the city, in particular, where it, it does seem to manifest itself. Which is the uh, the bridge that goes across the Lakeshore Drive uh, over the Chicago River downtown? There have been several sightings that that actually seem to manifest from that area, uh, but th they're brief sightings now. But of course, we've had sightings all over the city. Uh, it just hasn't been on the lakefront. This last sighting was actually in south the south side. And we've had other sightings in the south side. And in fact, we've had sightings further south than that, just inside the city limits along waterways. Oh, so, uh, um, like, looking at the map, it's, they're sighting it all throughout the Chicagoland area, which is, right. you know, well, Chicago's 3 million, right? But Chicagoland is like 8 million. Right. And we'll think, like, let's see, number 12 and number 8. Yeah, uh, I can't get over it many areas of all those clusters of sightings it's just it's wow it's mind-blowing yeah that is it is interesting and um generally i'm of i feel of the same way like you know when i hear of um uh, things flying around and red glowing eyes and and that kind of thing uh it, you got, you got to ask that question. You know, is there, is there some kind of interdimensional or demonic kind of something going on with it? Especially if we're not seeing breeding populations or, or we're not seeing the things that would indicate that this is just a zoological creature. Opposed to, like you said, if, it, if, if you know, we have things like CERN going on and all, you know, a bunch of different kind of stuff. Who knows, you know, uh, what could be pulled through at what for what, you know... Stranger things have happened, so... Well, we have been looking into the CERN facility outside of Chicago, and, um, you know, there very well may be something to that. Uh, that facility, I believe, has actually been there about 40 years now. And, uh, you know, is this thing opening up portals or doorways to a, another dimension? It's possible. I, uh, you know... I, I do believe that there are portals in a lot of different places. I mean, they may not, there may be different sizes of portals here and there. And in fact, the uh, Lake Michigan has had a lot of phenomena over many years. The Michigan Triangle, in particular, has had disappearances and strange anomalies take place uh, in the the Triangle. There has been speculation that uh, there are portals that emanate out of Lake Michigan, and mainly for the fact that there have been a lot of green orb sightings on the water surface and just flying above the water surface that they just appear. Um, we had one sighting of this being... Uh, actually out in the in the lake about a mile and a half off Montrose uh, Beach and the witness actually saw 
a uh, green orb going across the horizon right after she saw the um, the flying humanoid. So you know, is it related? I don't know. But I, you know, there have been there have been a lot of strange anomalies so far. Uh, in fact, down south of Chicago, in Chicago Heights area, and a few other places nearby, there have been people that have noticed flashes of light at night. Uh, they have no idea where it's coming. You're listening to Love Advice with Leanne. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Leanne. Long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> Why, in your professional opinion, do you never take my calls off the air? Is this Carl? Yep, it's Carl. I mean, we had a few dates. Everything was great. I thought, uh... Well, you know, when you switch to GEICO, you could save a lot of money on car insurance. Okay, awesome. You should call them. I will. GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Coming from, but they have noticed it. I've received three reports since this has been happening. So is that associated with what's going on? I have no idea. Until we can, uh, you know, find some type of uh, connection between these anomalies and and these flying humanoids, I, and I really can't say what's going on. Okay, everybody. With that, it is time for our first commercial break. You are listening to Ver- Paraversal Universe Radio on the Inception Radio Network. Welcome back to Paraversal Universe on Inception Radio Network. We're your hosts, Kevin and Jennifer Malik. And we're chatting with Fertine researcher Lon Strickler. But before we bring him back on, we'd like to take a minute and thank everybody who makes Paraversal Universe possible, including graphic art designer Lawrence D. Mizo, announcer William Pritchard, music by Matt Stenz, producer Michael M.J. Lucas, and of course, to God for granting us this wonderful show and opportunity here to be with you all. This segment is brought to you by Lucas Wellness and the UFO Wisconsin Research Team. Uh, we also have three Paraversal Universe like pages. And also check out uh, Jennifer Malik, psychic demonologist, Jennifer's like page. And of course, the Northern Wisconsin Paranormal Society Limited like page. Uh, we also have two group pages worth noting uh, Lake Monstrosities, which is the largest group page at Facebook for aquatic <laughs> mysteries and lake monsters. And finally, Ultimate Conspiracy which is pretty much self-explanatory. If you have any questions for us, uh, if you have any questions for our guest, go to IRNChat.com to go to our IRN chat room where you can post questions and comments. Jenny will pass those along. Next week is the 2017 Champ Expedition Update with William... I always get the last name wrong. Durang... Ranganesis and Scott Marties. I'm sorry I butchered that name. I, I do that. I, I apologize. Anyways, so yeah, looking forward to that because they went out and they did some uh, some expedition research and they have some stuff they're excited to talk about and uh, we are excited to hear what they have to say. So, uh, having said that, why don't we bring Lon back on? Are you with us still, Lon? Yeah, yes, I am. Okay, do we have any questions in chat before we jump back in? Yes, we do, actually. Um, have there actually been any pictures taken of this of this sighting of this owl man, or no? Uh, the only picture that we have was from 2011. And, uh, but the recent sightings, no, we haven't had any, unfortunately. Um. Uh, the, re- the reason that we keep getting from the witnesses are it's either too dark or this thing is too fast or they do try to take a picture and it just doesn't come out right. Um, you know, the, the, it's, you know, camera phones are great, but they don't or always take the greatest photographs. And, uh, you know, this this thing does show up a lot in dark areas, and we just have not been able to get get a photo yet. We've gotten sketches, but we haven't gotten any photos. Does anyone have any ideas as to why it might be around? Is there? I mean, 
okay, we can either assume that it's like some kind of harvester of doom or some kind of, you know, dark apparition kind of thing, uh, or it, it's something else and there's a reason that it's it's present. Um, is there any speculation? Uh, is, have anybody, is there any correlations like, I don't know, anything in the vicinity that's, that lines up or? Has there been any yeah, well, we we've tried to check the locations and, and the descriptions to see if there was any uh, correlation, and we just haven't been able to do that. Now I've got it's myself and Manuel and and several other people who live in the city who are investigators who are helping us out, and uh, we we just really have not come up with any any type of a pattern that gives us any clues as to why it's showing up. I don't believe it's malevolent. Uh, it hasn't attacked anybody. It sure scared a lot of people, but it hasn't ta- attacked anybody. Several people, in fact, most of the, the witnesses have experienced some type of uh, fear or uh, foreboding after seeing this being. Uh, there's a lot of hesitation, well, as in most cryptid sightings, as uh, far as reporting. But some people actually felt compelled that they needed to report it. Uh, one interesting aspect to this last sighting that we haven't really re- I don't think we received another one like it, was this thing actually screamed. Um, uh, it made some type of sound. You had mentioned earlier about, uh, or asked earlier about people seeing this thing standing stationary. Uh, the, the recent reports, there have been four instances of this happening, where it's actually being seen perched on something and, and watching. So, they, I mean, it's been seen stationary or still. Perching and in flying. So, um, but as far as why, you know, there, and you know, any reason why, I, I I can't come up with anything yet. At this point, it seems that uh, enough people have seen this, and enough people feel that this is a uh, uh, something real. So we can rule out. Is it safe to rule out uh, like drones? You know, people making drone creatures or uh, that kind of thing. I mean. Because coming into this, there were so many different, you know, is, is this an alien? Is this a drone? Is this a, a man in a, some kind of flying suit? Um, and then, of course, they got them, them, uh, them other suits, too, them gliding suits. Although I don't, uh, I don't think them would be feasible because, like you said, especially if, if it's stationary and then takes off, that just totally disproves the flying suit thing. Well, you know... I- I've kind of dispelled the uh, the drone or persons in a squirrel suit very early because uh, some of the maneuvers that this thing has done, uh, the way it has moved its head and looked at people, the, the, the shining red eyes that have many many people have noticed, um, the flapping of the wings are the pro- propelled being propelled without flapping the wings. Uh, there's definitely a supernatural aspect to it, but this thing is some type of flesh and blood being. Now, you know, that kind of leaves you with a few options to what you're dealing with. But the fact that people claim that being a drone or a a person in a suit just doesn't make any sense. Uh, then, you know, they don't call Chicago the Windy City for nothing. I mean, this, you know, if you're you're flying between buildings and above the river downtown, uh, you're going to find a, uh, a dead flying humanoid or a dead person faster than you're going to find one that's alive or see something that's going up and down over bridges, under bridges, without any effort. Uh, uh, the stunts that this thing has done or performed is literally impossible with a person in a suit or a drone. This thing isn't flapping its wings, is it? Sometimes. 
Sometimes it does. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm bad. A question for you from the chat room. Is there any evidence of these things interfering with electronics, like with Sasquatch? Um, nothing that has been reported to us. There haven't been any electrical anomalies or magnetic, uh, electromagnetic pulses that have been registered anyway. Uh, I'm not saying it's not possible. In fact, it could be possible. This may be some reason why people can't take photographs or, uh, you know, I, I don't know. But I don't, I had, none, none of that has been reported to us so far. I have another question for you. Have you ever heard of the telepathic communication with these, uh, with these creatures or any other type of communication? Not really. Um. A few of the sightings in Point Pleasant, people stated that they felt like it was communicating with them somehow. Uh, I have had other sightings and encounters with similar type beings where people have, have noted that there may possibly have been some type of telepathic or ESP. But these sightings, it doesn't really seem to be that. So we were... Uh, talking off during the break and uh, you had mentioned the possibility of some sightings in Wisconsin and yeah yeah I I was told by another researcher recently that and during the same pot time period that the, these this phenomena has been going on in the Chicago area there have been at least two sightings of a similar being in, in the area around Milwaukee. Now, the the biggest difference with those sightings are it seems that the being is smaller and the eyes are green. Now, I don't I don't know, you know, I don't know what's going on there. I'm just waiting to get information from from this researcher. Uh He's a well-known researcher, so, you know, it's somebody I trust, somebody I trust with, you know, some of the investigations I do. But, um, you know, there's really not a whole lot right now to give us any idea what this is, at least of that, what I know of. All right, it's interesting for, for us here because, you know, we had that batch watch thing like we were discussing before, uh, like you said, in lacrosse and in that part of the state. Uh and, uh, you know, Milwaukee's only, what, uh, like 90 minutes north of, of Chicago. I mean, when you look at, uh, you know, the globe from space at nighttime, it looks like one big city. You know, that whole southern uh, Michigan, you know, all the lights and everything. I mean, because once you leave Milwaukee, it's just we're seeing Kenosha and then bam, you're into Chicago. So, uh Kind of all connected. I could see where it's possible. Being so close, yeah, there, might, there might be a relationship. I, I don't know. You know, the fact that they're both on the lake may have uh, might be some connection. But other than that, I, I really don't know. Oh, that's we've we've mentioned a couple times now. The the first time was with the river, and now with the lake. Do you think there could be an aquatic connection of some type? I'm, it's possible. Uh, some of the sightings have been along some of the smaller rivers and along the Chicago River and its tributaries. And, of course, there have been some sightings out on the lake or on the lake shore. Yeah, I, I believe there may be some connection somehow. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, there have supposedly been portals seen or portals producing manifestations in the past. Uh, out in out in the uh, Lake Michigan, so I, you know, th is this part of that? It very well may be. Hmm. So, of all the the reports, what was the closest sighting as far as like distance between the person and the creature? Uh, probably, probably the uh, couple. 
that was on the lake on the lakeshore area. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna try to pull it up here. This was um, this happened on Saturday, May the twenty seventh, at North Wrightwood Avenue and North Lakeview Avenue. A couple had noticed. Um, and this was in the evening. This a couple had noticed something large, approximately fifteen foot in the air and moving along at a brisk pace. It looked like a giant bat, only it was way larger and solid black. Uh, it would have been solid black if it weren't for the two glowing red eyes staring back at the witnesses. And when this thing went over them, it actually looked back at them. It tilted its head, looked back, and it circled back and flew right towards them and then went, flew up before it got to them. Um, the husband actually said, he, he mentioned that it was not something of this world, and if it was, it was undiscovered. They actually waited about a month to report it. Um, they were so freaked out by it. Uh, the we had a sighting not long after that near the um, well. This was June seventeenth near the Navy Pier, and, and uh, between Ohio Street Beach and the Navy Pier, uh, it was about seven o'clock p.m. So it was dusk, but it was still light out, and this jogger saw this giant bat from there, it, it came out from underneath the bridge at North Lake Shore Drive, and that's the bridge I mentioned before. And it flew parallel to East Grand Avenue and then up and over the trees toward the water treatment plant, but this thing was only about 15 to 20 foot away from the witness. Uh, same description, basically, as the others. So those were probably the closest, but I mean, it has... It has gotten within fifty feet of several of the uh, the witnesses. You know, if if this were not an interdimensional or inter, yeah, interdimensional being, it would have to hide somewhere or reside somewhere. And uh, yeah, I guess Chicago's you know Chicago's massive. I mean, abandoned buildings, uh, water sewers. Uh, you know, uh, I, I could, but you would figure with, with that many people down there, you know, and that, like you said, there are probably so many people, or at least as many people that, because that's what we see that in paranormal in general, where for, you know, um, not everybody will report what they've seen to other people, you know, uh, many people will keep it to themselves, just out of fear of ridicule, or because they've chosen in their own mind to Debunk it in some way, you know. Um, or well, something. we had a um, we had a sighting at the Adler Planetarium, uh, where the witness, the well, it was a couple witnesses who were together, who mentioned that this thing flew across the uh, Adler Planetarium out across through the lake, and. Uh, they said there were almost 30 witnesses there who had mentioned it and were watching this thing. But we had only received the one, uh, the one witness report. But then a week later, someone else came forward and, and was telling us that uh, they had seen the same thing. They mentioned the same date, time, and everything. But when they, they mentioned, got a little more detail saying it was actually flying from the atom the Adler Planetarium, which was actually on a peninsula outside into the lake, was flying towards Soldier Stadium, which is on the lake shore. And, and uh, then it turned around and came back over Adler Planetarium. So, you know, that was, that was a verifiable sighting there. So, um, you, know, and, you know, we have had other people that reported the same sighting before, uh, one other instance. Uh, the one in Lincoln Park. Um, so, you know, people are seeing it. I mean, there are groups of people that are seeing it. It's just a matter of people reporting it. 
Right. Because even if it were to stop manifesting now, you may still get reports from people eventually changing their minds and saying, I'm yeah. going to forward with it. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm quite sure we're going to get a few more reports of people who have, are debating with themselves and others if they're going to report it. You know, and speaking of which, you know, you got the, the mainstream media, uh, and they're not, they're not, uh, I, I guess, helping the situation. I, I don't hear them reporting on it. Uh, and and are there is there anybody besides uh, yourself and UFO Clearinghouse taking? Uh, I was told I was told Wednesday night that one of the uh, the news channels in Chicago had mentioned something of the sightings. Uh, several of the radio stations in the Chicago area have been posting some of the re some of the sighting reports on their websites. Uh, but quite frankly, I, I I'd rather not they I'd rather they not report it because I I, I just don't need copycats uh, contacting me about sightings. You know, you're right. When, when, when the general public starts getting reports from the news media, uh, uh, there, you always got a chance of somebody, you know, copycat reports or people thinking they're seeing things, you know. <laughs> so, you know, I, I just rather it, it be impulse sightings where people have actually seen something and feel that they need to contact us, you know. I don't need a thousand sightings to understand that this thing is going on. Uh, so that's a good yeah, point. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I'm happy with what we're getting now. Yeah, you're right. In fact, uh, yeah, because because uh, that's that's a very good point. We got a couple minutes left. Uh, let's plug your books. You have books. Um, How many books do you have? Is my first. I've, I've got five out right now. Um, Can you tell us? I call it, I call it the Encounter series, um, the Phantoms and Monsters Encounter series, and basically, the books include sightings that people report to me and some of my investigations. And the last book contained a few vintage investigations, vintage sightings, uh, plus some follow-ups to sightings I've. And investigations and research that I have done. The next book, which I am working on, is going to include these this new information with the sightings in Chicago and other what I call extra dimensional beams. So uh, it's going to run the gamut as far as different types of beings that I believe are uh, not of this earth plane, but from somewhere else coming to this earth plane. And that includes some type of alien, some type of other type of humanoids and other anomalies. So I'm, I'm in the process of putting all that together now. That sounds really interesting. <clears throat> One of our like pages is paracryptozoology and uh, just the idea that there could be uh, some of these cryptids may have powers or abilities that humans simply don't possess uh, and, and, and that could be something as simple as either going invisible by, by changing its vibration to going through portals or, or you know um, you know we have snakes and you know not until recently did were we even aware of what thermal vision was? You know, and it's hard to think that there's animals been existing the whole time that can see with thermal vision. Or the idea that, you know, like a hammer of shark can identify a battery buried under the ocean because of its its magnetic sensors on its head. Them are, you know, uh, there are so many things that are possible. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe... I believe cryptid sightings, for the most part, uh, talking about beings that there's no real scientific uh, 
knowledge of who or what they are, but people have seen them for centuries. Uh, Bigfoot, upright canines, flying beings, unknown other type of beings. Uh, I believe uh, a lot of those are extra uh, dimensional beings, extra dimensional type humanoids. So, um, you know, I'm not going to include every, I'm not going to include a whole bunch of Bigfoot and upright canine sightings in his next book, but I am going to include some other oddball, other unexplained type of uh, anomaly sightings. Where can people find your stuff? Well, I, the books are all on Amazon. All you got to do is search my name, Lon Strickler, or search Phantoms and Monsters, and they'll all come up. They're in uh, book form or in Kindle. Uh, and the blog is phantomsandmonsters.com. If you go to the blog, and it, I try to post daily. Uh, uh if you want to get the daily's newsletter, if you go to the right hand column and scroll down a bit, there's a module there for you to put your email address in, and you'll get the uh, you'll get the free newsletter daily. All right, and yeah, uh, we encourage everyone to go check that out. Uh, we do, and and uh, thank you for the content. Uh, every once in a while, we'll post. Uh, um, some of your articles, Phantom and Monsters, just because they're good, we enjoy. Them. Uh, well, I appreciate that. Yeah. We appreciate you coming on tonight as well. <laughs> thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you so much. It was such an honor, and it was such fun having you on. And everybody in chat, it's just was just super excited about it. Thank you so much. You take care and. Uh, Maybe we'll talk again. Sounds good. Sounds good. So next week, uh, we have Scott Mardis and William Durang. It's this. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> um, they're coming on next week, the cryptozoologist. They, uh, they uh, just did an expedition down in Lake Champlain uh, for Champ this summer, and we're going to talk to them about some of the stuff that they've done. So, uh, Check that out.